What's up everyone, Carlo here, and today I'm going to show you how to record Mini Jam the way I do nowadays. It's been quite a while since there's been a tutorial, especially with this new editor that I've used to now be able to edit Mini Jam to make it look like this, but now I think is the time to actually show you how to do it. Let's begin. Okay, so before I do anything, I'm just going to disable full screen in Midi Jam because I did this in one recording and I don't want to mess something up. By the way, you'll also want to make a copy of Midi Jam that you can edit. So in case you mess something up, you can go back and start all over again after you make a copy of the unedited Midi Jam. So you can tell that it's got the red progress bar in the background. And we're going to remove that with HXD, which I'll put a link to in the description. So once you have HXD, you're going to want to open the Midi Jam.exe. Then click search, click go to, and type 2189C with hex and begin selected. And then click OK. And then try to find the blue section that um, what, you, what you see here is right next to what I'm highlighting. And then you're going to want to do that ex those exact 00040000. Select the 11152 and put it to the desired resolution. I'm going to put this 1920. Or I'm going to set it to 1920. And now I'm going to select this specific selection. And I'm just going to check that to see what it is. And then I'm going to set that to 1080. Okay, now I've just set that. So, yeah. Now, this one I'm going to do right, um, like, uh, about two lines above. Similar process. Ex actually, no. You want know Wait. Wait. Okay. So... This is 21840, so I'm going to make that 3840. Sorry about that. Pause. And then I'm going to do the similar thing, just like the usual other process that I did with 1080, and make that one 2160. That's exactly the 4K resolution for widescreen 16 by 9. And I'm just seeing what these are, and honestly... The two that I just did are the ones I have tried before, and I recommend those. So in that case, just, yeah, just do those two resolutions. You're not going to do anything else. Um, the only difference that would, would be if you had to make it for 1440p instead. So you can just do the same thing I did with 1080 and 4K, only that if you have a different monitor, just set it to the highest your monitor is or your display. I have a 4K display because I made I made a custom resolution of that, and yeah. So, sorry about that. That was in 4K. Anyway, I'm just going to set that to 1080p. And the results don't look too bad, as you're going to see right now. But we still have to get rid of the background and the progress bar and the text. How can we do that? Well, here's something I found. So, with this interesting editor that was made by Wyscotch, if I said that correctly, you're going to want to click open in the window, or program, sorry. Find the folder for your midijam.hwf that you're going to edit, and just select that. And you can tell it's got lots of textures and lots of models as well. Okay, so yeah, just a lot of things for the instruments. So you can recolor them if you want. And yeah, a lot of stuff too. So now go to export after you click file. And then you click that, which is export. You're going to want to select Son fill bar and fill bar box dot ms 3 d Save it in a folder that you're going to find it in or one that's especially easy to find, and then click export. And if it says two assets exported, or two assets exported, if I said that correctly, yeah, you're on the right foot. Now, this is something that I normally would want to do in Milkshape 3D, but that one I am unable to edit unless I actually register, so I'm going to use Frag Motion, which I'll put in the description. So now you're going to want to click Import, or Open, actually. And obviously, there's just me doing that. And you're going to select the fill bar box and click control A as I'm about to do here and then hit the delete key. Now go to file, click export and go to save as types, find ms.3d, not dot, okay, I mean dot ms3d, sorry. And if you get something asking you if you want to replace it, just click yes, because we're obviously going to import it into the HWF editor. And now I'm going to do the same for the fill bar box. Basically, just do the same process that you did with the fill bar itself. I'm sorry about that. And yeah, then I'm just going to hit delete. Now export. And just click save. Just click yes on that. And now click import. Find the two MS3D files. 
and select the two and import. If you get that window saying two assets imported, you've done the right thing. And make sure to save your HWF2. Now for the text that would appear in the bottom of the MidiJam screen. So you're going to want to click File again, and then click Export. Then scroll down until you find font 0 BMP and font 1 BMP. Hold Control and select those two, release Control and then click Export, and then find a place to export the two assets. Click Export once you find the place, and I'm just going to get rid of those two MS3D files because I don't need them. Now, I've tried paint.net, but I didn't get very good results that would work when I Im tried importing them, so I'm going to use paint 3D, which, is all, which I already know will work. I'm just going to zoom in for a little bit. And then, okay, don't click the paintbrush. Okay, no, 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 don't do that. No, 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 no. Cl click the fill bucket icon, and then go, and then set the tolerance really high. Make sure it's all black in this case. And then make sure you save it too. I did it with Control S, so I knew, so I, um, that's, you didn't have to see that. You could just click save once you find it, but you can also do the Control S, which will always work. Now for font zero, I'm going to also open it with Paint 3D. Then I'm going to click the fill and set the tolerance really high and fill that with all white. And now I'm just going to use Control S. And yeah, now I'm just going to import that. And that's it. So now you just need to also save this HWF file, which I'm going to do right now. I almost forgot in that case but you should be able to do it at when you click file. So I'm going to click the minijam.exe once I, um, yeah, I'm just going to do that. And you can see that there's no text, but they still have the background in there. So I'm going to show you how to remove that. So to remove the background, I'm just going to scroll down so I can see the background and see its name. Any second now. Okay, that's screen gradient BMP. I'm going to click export after I click file. Then I'm going to scroll down and wait till I find screen gradients.bmp. Okay, any second now, I'm just going to scroll down more. This is all in alphabetical order, which is nice. Alphabetical order, sorry. And then just select screen gradient.bmp and find a place to export it. One asset exported. And now I'm just going to select that and Open that with Paint 3D as well. Okay, I um, you can you can zoom in as much as you want. It's not really going to matter, but yeah. Now I'm going to click the fill, and for me now to get the result like I did in my last video, I'm I just filled all with black just like that. So I'm just going to save with Control S, and now I'm just going to import it. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm not, I don't want to delete that. Okay, I'm just going to click import. Go to MiniGM YouTube example and import the screen gradient BMP once I select that. Now I'm going to save and close. And now I just, I just need to, I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't really need it now because it's already imported. So it looks pretty solid. And that's pretty much how you get a MiniGM result like um, what's basically, I'm just going to open another mini because why not? And yeah, this is how you get a result like. Weisskodge, if I said that correctly, or Weisskodge, Weisskodge, I don't know how to say it, or like me in my latest video, like that harmonic voltage video that you might actually find in my YouTube channel, which was synced with the original audio, but yeah, this is how you get a result like me, and if you find a way to actually make the background wider so you can have a green screen, or if I find a way how to do that, I'll be sure to make another tutorial video on how to do that with frag motion. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.